Hi, I'm Mark Montano. This week, we're exploring one of my passions and the way I started my career, fashion. Kelly Nishimoto will be stopping by to help me with a way to dress up those tired shoes and purses. We'll be making a gorgeous fashion mirror, sewing your little ballerinas an adorable tutu to dance around in, and Peter will be here to show us how to make a multi-tier clothing rack. I hope you're ready to rock the runway in this week's episode, Fashion Week. Come on, it's time to make your mark. This show is made possible by Krylon. Krylon has been formulating paints that deliver color, durability, and fast dry time since 1947. Our range of products expands from indoors to out with a variety of formulations to meet project needs, from plastic and laminate to rust preventative and craft and hobby products. And by Eclectic Products, makers of the E6000 family of adhesives. E6000 professional strength adhesives for crafts, decor, home repairs, scrapbooking, photos, framing, and more. E6000 industrial strength adhesive. Favecrafts.com is proud to sponsor Make Your Mark. At favecrafts.com, you can find craft projects, videos, and tips. New crochet, Christmas crafts, sewing, kids crafts, jewelry making, knitting, paper craft projects, and more. And by Plaid Enterprises. Plaid has been happily helping crafters bring ideas to life with products such as Folk Art, Delta, Apple Barrel, Lucilla, Gallery Glass, One Stroke, and Mod Podge. Plaid, creative ideas made easy. Graphic artsy purses never go out of style. Boring basic ones can go out pretty quickly though. Kelly Nishimoto is here to help me show you a modern art inspired shoe and purse redo that adds some flash to some of your more dated pieces. It's fun and simple and yields great results. Kelly Nishimoto is a talented fashion designer. She runs an LA boutique, dresses some incredible celebrities, and her clothing graces the Fashion Week runways. She's hosted several prominent television shows and is now the host of a new series, Something Borrowed, Something New. So today we are making Jackson Pollock inspired accessories. The guy that does the paint splattering? That's exactly who I'm talking about. So we're just going to do something like that with, you know, some accessories you might otherwise donate to a thrift store. First things first, just to prepare our accessories, we are going to randomly wrap them with yarn. Okay. This is the fun part. Okay. Okay. So what I've done here is stuff the shoe with newspaper first. And so that don't you don't spray paint the inside and have spray paint on your feet? Exactly. Got it. So we're going to randomly wrap the shoe and the purse with the yarn. Okay. Tightly. Tightly. Yes. Okay. So go for it. All right. This is actually really fun to do. Okay. Let's get it. Yeah. You're gonna. You're, it's gonna take a. I'm little doing while. the handle. You can do the. You don't that have to do the handle if you don't want to. Place to start. But you can do. You can do the rest of it. That was very ambitious of me. It really was, but we still have. <laughs> we will have to get to that handle at some point. Okay. Now, the more random you wrap it, the better, because we want it to be, you know, really abstract. That's. That looks great. Okay. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Good job. So I've taped some of the string on the bottom of the shoe so that it doesn't move on the top. Just for the little problem areas. Teamwork. <laughs> How you do it. I'm gonna okay. just tie this up because you are almost okay. done here and 
and then I'm going to tell you about the next step. Oh yeah, that's way better. It does kind of look does kind of look messy right now, but I promise you, once it's done, you're going to love it. So now we're done wrapping our accessories in the yarn, and we wrapped it kind of tightly and secured some of the wrapping with a little piece of tape. You've wrapped all the way around the handle, and you've tied knots, and it looks, in the words of Kelly, like a hot mess. Now I'm ready for magic. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is take it outside and coat it in some black spray paint. Okay, I took these outside, spray painted them, and let them dry. And now we're going to remove the yarn. Now, just in case the yarn is still a little bit wet, I'm going to do it so that we don't mess up your pretty hands. Okay. Oh, that's really cool. Gives it a really fun design, doesn't it? Oh, I did a good job. You really did. <laughs> okay, so we've got this really cool abstract string design on top, and it's just black and white, but we want to give it a pop of color. Pink, I assume. Your favorite color. <laughs> I know it is. So I've picked a metallic pink acrylic. Oh, cool. And basically, what we're going to do now is just have a little bit of fun okay. with the accessories. I'm taking acrylic paint, and I'm dipping in a wide paintbrush, and I'm splattering the accessories, just like this. Just to give it some pizzazz. Pizzazz. Well, I really like the splattering. It kind of takes it and gives it a whole new dimension. It's very modern and, and funky. I think it feels young and kind mm -hmm. of fresh and, you and know. Kind of like a rebel. I feel like a rebel. And if you're artistic, mm -hmm. you can use all kinds of different colors. Um, it's definitely something interesting, something new. Okay, we actually splattered these and I didn't get any paint on myself. Yeah, Did me I get neither. any paint on you? No, I don't think so. I think we're good. Okay, Jackson Pollock inspired accessories. What do you think? I think it's great. I was nervous at first because it was just, I don't know, it was kind of weird wrapping a purse with string. But it's adorable. I love the splatter, I love the color, and I would wear them. I'm so glad. I'll have to make you a pair. Mirrors have a great way of making small rooms look bigger. I have them in every room in my house. Today I'm going to teach you a way to make custom mirrors out of basic, inexpensive frames. Using this technique, you can not only customize the frame color, but you can also customize the mirror itself. Today, we'll be adding some vintage fashion prints to the mirror, but you can use any images you like to make it fit your space. First thing you want to do is find some fashionable images you'd like inside of your mirror. I found these 1950s women that I think are just terrific. The next thing you want to do is copy your images on a plain home copy machine. And the reason is because plain copy paper actually decoupages much better than, say, a magazine page. After you've picked out your images, carefully cut them out. Take your time when you're cutting out your images. If you're not comfortable with scissors and don't feel like you're getting enough detail, use a craft knife and a cutting mat. I thought I'd give this frame a really vintage feel by using vintage fashion illustrations. I think it's just gonna look really good. Once you've cut out your images, it's time to take apart your frame. Flip it over and using 
a flathead screwdriver, bend up the little tabs that keep in the glass and the cardboard. Carefully remove the glass and the cardboard from inside the frame. Once you've removed the glass, we're going to figure out the placement of our images. I think that looks really good, just like that. Next, we're going to use a decoupage medium and apply our images to the glass. We're going to apply them to the back side of the glass because we want to be able to clean our mirror and not disrupt the image. Now we're going to paint the decoupage medium on the front of our image, not the back, right on top of it, just like that. All right, you ready to see? Let's add the rest of our images. Once our images are adhered to the glass, we're going to let them dry. And next, we're going to clean the glass thoroughly to make sure that we don't have any fingerprints left on the glass before we turn it into a mirror. Otherwise, you'll see it on the front this is the fun part. We're taking our pieces outside. We're going to spray paint a looking glass paint on the back of the glass, and then we're going to pick up a color from one of our fashion images to spray paint the frame. Now that the pieces are dry, we're just going to reassemble our mirror. Start by putting in your glass first. Next, you want a layer of protective cardboard and then after that, the back of your frame. Mirrors tend to be expensive, and the great thing about making your own is that you can put them all over your house. And the thing that I love about mirrors is that they can actually double the size of a room, at least visually. We're just folding our tabs back to keep everything in place inside the mirror. Here you go, your brand new vintage mirror. Now your mirror is dressed for success. I know my nieces were pretty obsessed with their ballerina phase. And I don't know any little girl who didn't love dressing up in a beautiful tutu. With the amount of time kids play in those things, it's a good idea to have a few on reserve. While even better than stocking up from the store, I'm going to teach you how to make your own quick and easy tutu. They make a great birthday gift and you can make them in a variety of colors. The first thing you need to do is decide how long you want your tutu. We're going to make this one 24 inches long. Next, we're going to cut out eight panels of tulle 24 inches long. Instead of measuring each piece, I'm just going to go ahead and use the first one as a template. Don't worry if the cutting on your tutu isn't perfectly straight. You can always straighten it out at the very end of the project. The next thing we're going to do is prepare our sewing machine. We've threaded it in pink to match our tutu. We're going to loosen the tension on the top stitch and make our straight stitch as long as possible. Next, we're going to run a straight stitch across the top of all of the panels. When you have about four or five inches left of your panel, 
You're just going to overlap the next panel right on top of it, just like this. So you see that? We have a five inch overlap of our panels of tool. And we're just gonna continue that till we're done with all eight panels. So as you can see here, I'm using folded panels of tulle because it makes more volume in the skirt and you don't want a flat tutu. Once you have all your panels sewn together, take your bobbin thread and start gathering the tulle just like this. Once you have the tool gathered to the desired waist size, we're gonna take both of the threads at the end and tie them in a knot so that it doesn't slip. Cut a piece of grow grain ribbon, the waist size plus 30 inches so that you can tie a bow. Make sure to correct the tension on your sewing machine. Line up the center of the ribbon with the center of your gathered tutu. Using a zigzag stitch at the edge of the ribbon, we're going to attach the tool to the ribbon. I have as much fun making these for my nieces as they do wearing them. So once we have our tutu on the ribbon, you can go behind the ribbon and trim if you need to. And if your hem is uneven, just gather up the tutu just like this and just chop off the end so that it's nice and even. Okay, we've got our plain pink tutu, but what kind of uncle would I be if I let my niece run around in a plain tutu? I went to the fabric store and I found these beautiful little pink and lavender butterflies. And all we're going to do is hot glue them around the tutu. She's gonna love this. I like to go crazy with my embellishments. I mean, if you're gonna walk around in a tutu, it might as well be a crazy tutu. Voila, I am ready for my Uncle of the Year award. I was at a clothing boutique the other day and I came across some great metal pipe clothing racks. They gave a wonderful industrial feel and were much sturdier than the simple racks I've seen before. I asked Peter to figure out how these were made and in true Peter fashion, he came back with something even better. He'll be showing us how to use standard pipe lengths that you can buy at any hardware store to create a multi-tier clothing rack. Peter Marr has experience in all realms of construction, from celebrity homes to the set we're standing on right now. For the past 10 years, he's been the host of a variety of home decor television shows, sharing his knowledge of building. To top it all off, Peter is an award-winning comic. Well, Mark, to start with, the best thing to do is draw out how you want your clothing rack to look. So for a three-tiered rack, which way do you want to go? Are we going to start up, mm -hmm. going to come over, bend, down, over, and then down. Something like that, right? Yep, that looks great. Awesome. Yeah. And on that note, we're going to need to hold this thing up somehow, right? Okay. And put a couple of feet on there. Gotcha. 
and something to hold it across on the bottom. So a support bar. Exactly, a support bar so these legs don't go flying apart from each other anytime you try to move it. Okay, that looks simple enough. Simple enough. Now let's start counting pieces. So every time you come to a right angle, you're going to need an elbow. Every time you come to an intersection where three pipes meet, you're going to need a T. Okay. Like right there. Gotcha. And for a nice sturdy base, these base plates are going to come in quite handy right there on the bottom where it meets the floor. And all these pieces of pipe come in standard sizes. Now that you have all the pieces you need, it's ready to wrench this thing together. The only tool you're going to need is a pipe wrench. We're going to start with the big pipe. It's going to be a little bit easier if you have a nice wide open space like a garage floor to, uh, to lay this out on. So after you lay out your design, you're going to want to tighten everything together clockwise because the way these threads work, you have to turn each piece into each other piece clockwise. And that's why we have this special piece at the very end to tie it all together. So really this is just all about assembling. All about assembling. And we're going to actually be turning pipes for quite a while. So I guess this is the, uh, the really fast montage moment then, huh? Okay. All right. And if you notice, we had to go in clockwise order. We started with this pipe, put it into there, threaded it all the way across clockwise. And now we're working on the last leg. We're on our last leg. Okay, we've got the top, and now we're going to create the base. Yeah, first of all, you see we have two different sizes here, right? Yes. That's because we're gonna have to put one of these guys on there it's going to make up for that difference in the size. Gotcha. And then what's going to happen is that's going to go into something like that. And then this is how we're going to lay out the feet. This will be the support bar that goes up to the top of the rack. Yep. And this will be the support bar that goes along the bottom to keep it from wobbling. Exactly. And one thing I would say is if you have gloves, wear them because these little pieces right here can get pretty cutty. Okay. It's a technical term for... Sharp. Sharp. All right, that looks pretty sturdy. There's one side. Okay, so we just do the same to the other side. Now that we have the feet assembled, it's time to attach them to the rest of the clothing rack. To do that, we're gonna take this rack, lay it on the table, and then screw the feet onto it. Now that we have our feet on, we're going to put our support bar across the bottom. Now this is the part where the magic piece is going to come into play. You remember me saying before how you have to go clockwise with everything because the way the threads are made, they screw into each other clockwise. But you're going to get into a situation eventually where one side threads in and then if you try to thread it into the other side, it's going to loosen up on this side and there's nothing you can do about it. So. That's why they make unions. And I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. So then this guy goes into here. So what this union does is it puts these two pieces together with the ability to thread it tight. You ready to put this thing vertical? I am. All right. Okay. Nice job. Couldn't have done it without you, Mark. Now it's time to hang up your clothes. Now we can finally see what your floor looks like.
Today, we brought a bit of the runway to our lives with these amazing fashion projects. We overhauled old shoes and purses with a fun new look, made a chic fashion mirror, created beautiful tutus for our little princesses, and built an incredible industrial pipe clothing rack. I hope you enjoyed it because now it's your turn to make your mark. This show is made possible by Krylon. Krylon has been formulating paints that deliver color, durability, and fast dry time since 1947. Our range of products expands from indoors to out with a variety of formulations to meet project needs, from plastic and laminate to rust preventative and craft and hobby products. And by Eclectic Products, makers of the E6000 family of adhesives. E6000 professional strength adhesives for crafts, decor, home repairs, scrapbooking, photos, framing, and more. E6000 industrial strength strength adhesive. Favecrafts.com is proud to sponsor Make Your Mark. At Favecrafts.com, you can find craft projects, videos, and tips. New crochet, Christmas crafts, sewing, kids crafts, jewelry making, knitting, paper craft projects, and more. And by Plaid Enterprises. Plaid has been happily helping crafters bring ideas to life with products such as Folk Art, Delta, Apple Barrel, Busilla, Gallery Glass, One Stroke, and Mod Podge. Plaid, creative ideas made easy.